When dealing with phase changes, we have something called a specific latent heat. So this is really important. So anytime you have a change of phase, anytime you have something going from, say, from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or whichever, you have something associated with it. You have energy. And just like specific heat capacity, um, how specific meant per unit mass, well, specific latent heat is the amount of energy per unit mass that's absorbed or released during a phase change. So we have some sort of uh, term related to this. This is really important. So we're going to do this anytime you have a phase change, basically. So whenever you use this, whenever you have a phase change, this is really important. So anytime you're changing phase in some way, then you actually have to deal with this. Now, how do we actually figure this out? Well, we first need to talk about the different words. So we have latent heat of fusion. Uh, remember, now that is when you go from, so this will be the energy for, now here, uh, fusion is when you go from solid to liquid or liquid to solid. So I'm going to draw solid to liquid like this. But you can also go from liquid to solid. So I'm going to draw an arrow like this. So solid to liquid or liquid to solid. Whereas latent heat of vaporization is the energy for, in this case, it's liquid to gas. Right, that's boiling, or you can have gas to liquid, right, which is condensation. Just like this one here was um, melting and freezing. So when you have fusion, you're talking about things going from solid to liquid or liquid to solid. And if you're going from liquid to gas or gas to liquid, then you talk about vaporization. So we're going to have latent heat of fusion, and there's another thing called latent heat of vaporization. It just depends on which phases you're changing. But to deal with this, what is this specific latent heat? Maybe we'd better define it. So let's look at the equation we have for it. We actually have an equation that goes Q equals ML. This is the equation for it. So let's deal with this then. What is Q? You should know this by now. Q is the energy or the heat that's added or released. It all depends on which way you go. But energy is measured in joules. M is the mass of the material. And as usual, mass is measured in kilograms. Well, sometimes you'll see it in grams, but it should be kilograms. That's the more normal unit to use. We have L. And L is called the specific latent heat. So that's actually this definition here. When it says specific latent heat, that's actually what we're looking at. Now, how do you find the units to this? You don't have to memorize them. Take a look at this equation, Q equals ML, and get L by itself. It's Q over M. That means it has units of joules divided by kilograms. So it'll be joules per kilogram. So you don't have to memorize that unit. You just figure it out based on what you see here. So here's the key is when you see questions with phase changes, I'll write this down. So when you see any phase changes and you're dealing with some of these sort of mathematical questions, just throw in, I'm just going to say, so throw in a Q equals ML term for whoever, whichever one is actually changing phase, throw in a Q equals ML term. So I'm going to show you an example. I think that should help. Well, let's look at an example with phase changes and specific latent heat. So here we have one kilogram of solid mercury, that's called HG, that's its element name, is initially at its melting point of minus 39 degrees Celsius. That's what's really interesting about it is that at minus 39 is when it melts. In other words, anything colder than that, it's a solid, and anything hotter than minus 39, for example, room temperature, is when it's a liquid. That's what's interesting about it. It's a metal that's liquid at our room temperature, which is like plus 20 something degrees. Now this mercury is placed in a 0.5 kilogram aluminum calorimeter. And that is a uh, calorimeter just means a cup um, or a container of some kind. And that's filled with 1.2 kilograms of water. And that's at 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to assume that the aluminum and the water are at the same temperature. So we're told that the equilibrium temperature of the whole system is 16.5. What is the specific latent heat of fusion of mercury? Now, how in the world do we deal with this? We use our trusty old friend, Q lost equals Q gained.
This is how we deal with all of these kinds of questions. We just got to think who loses energy and who gains energy. Now we can actually look at this situation. We can try to draw it. I mean, here we have some sort of container here. And in it, we have some water. So maybe I'll just put that at least the uh, water at 20 degrees. So that's not very hot here. So here we have water. But we also have the aluminum calorimeter. So we also have that material there. So don't forget about the, in this case, the aluminum. I'm going to write alum for short. I hope that's okay for aluminum. And on top of that, we have the mercury itself. So we have some mercury that's actually being poured in. So we have it. However, it's sitting and it's being poured into this. So we have three players. We have mercury, water, and the aluminum cup. So who's losing energy and who's gaining energy? Let's just first deal with the specific heat capacity stuff. So remember I showed you that the equation for specific heat capacity was Q equals MC delta T. That is with a temperature difference. So anytime you see some sort of temperature difference, you do this. Anytime you have temperature rising or lowering, you use this. Anytime you have a phase change, what do you use? You use Q equals ML. That's how you figure these out. Let's first deal with anybody who's changing temperature. Is the mercury going to change temperature? Sure. Um, and is the water going to change temperature and the aluminum? Yes. So we're going to have a Q equals MC delta T for all three of these. And what's going to happen is there's also phase change because the mercury is also going to change phase from, you know, um, uh, liquid to, uh, sorry, from solid to liquid. And so we're going to have to deal with that as well. But that's okay. That's not a problem. Let's just deal with the temperature change ones first. So first, who's losing temperature? Well, we have the mercury that's at minus 39. That's very cold. This is the cold one, and these ones here are hot. So when you put them together, what's going to happen is the cold one is going to become hotter. And in fact, it goes up to 16.5. Whereas the hotter ones, which are 20, they go down to 16.5. See, they go down in temperature. So the ones that are losing temperature then are the ones that are initially at 20, right? Because 20 is larger than 16.5. So who loses temperature? The water and the aluminum. They're the Q lost. So maybe I'll just write that down. So we have Q alum plus we have Q water. And we're going to put QW for water. And that's going to be equal to your Q of your mercury. Because the mercury is the one that's gaining temperature. See, it's going from minus 39 to a very warm feeling 16.5. But don't forget, we're also going to have, because this one changes phase, we're also going to have an ML. That's just because of the changing phase. Okay, so this is how you deal with it. This is the hardest part, I think, is just thinking of how to set it up. There's a phase change, and here, this right here, that's because of a temp temperature difference, so is this, so is this. These are all from temperature differences. Okay, so because each of these gained or lost temperature or gained or lost um, energy in that sense, then we have a Q equals MC delta T here and here and here, and we just have a phase change. We just add an extra term because it went from, you know, it was at its melting point, so it changed phase. That's it. Then we just got to put in all the numbers and just do some bookkeeping. So let's start it off. So Q aluminum, that'll be M alum times C alum times delta T alum. All that plus M water, C water, delta T water. That will equal M mercury, C mercury, times delta T mercury. And let's just start putting in all the numbers then. So the mass of the aluminum is 0 0.5. So I'll put that in 0 0.50. We have C for aluminum, that's going to be 900. And the change in temperature for aluminum, well, it went from 20 to 16.5. So I'll write that down, 20 minus 16.5. So far, this is going just fine. Uh, then we have this one right here, so plus the water. So the mass of the water is 1.2. 
uh, specific heat capacity of the water is 4186. And the water also did 20 minus 16.5. And we set all that equal to um, this whole thing here, mass of mercury. So in this case right here, it's going to be, what was that, 1 kilogram times the specific heat capacity of mercury, which is 140, times its change in temperature. Now, its hottest goes first, so 16.5 minus minus 39. That's really important. There's a minus minus here because you're supposed to subtract, and it happens to be minus. Now, I've dealt with all the Q equals MC delta Ts. Can you see I've got one here? I've got an MC delta T here, and I've got one here. But I can't forget about my phase change here, so I've got to add M Merck times L. And the whole point of this exercise is to find this. So I need that, or else I'm not solving for anything. Do you notice I don't have any variables? These are just numbers. I can figure all these out. So i got to remember to add that. But that's why I add, then, mass of mercury, which again was 1, times L. Solve for L. So I can just write down all these numbers here. Now, 20 minus 16.5, that I can figure out. Right, I mean, uh, that's just two, no, 3.5. So is this. Now, 16.5 plus plus 39, that's what's really important. Uh, 9 plus 6, that'll be a 5. So this will be, what, 45, no, 55.5. 55.5. That'll be this piece. So let's deal with all these, and we've got 3.5 times 900 times 0.5. I better get out my trusty calculator here. So I'm going to look those up. So here we go. I've got uh, what 3.5 times, I want to multiply that by 900 times 0.5. And I get an answer of 1575. So I'll put that down here. So 1575. Plus, now I gotta figure out this sum right here, or this multiply. So I gotta do uh, 1.2 times 4186 times 3.5. So 1.2 times 4186 times 3.5. And I get an answer of 17581.2. So 17581.2. That equals. 55.5 times 140. So I can figure that out. And I get 7770. All right. So 7770 plus 1 times L, which is just L. Well, hey, actually, that started off really tough looking, and yet we can totally do this. So if I look at this and I want to get L by itself, so I do this plus this minus this, and I get L. So I'll do this number plus this number minus this because I want to move it over. So let's do it. So I've got 1575 plus 17581.2 equals this. Do that minus 7770. And I get an answer of 11386. Remember the units of specific latent heat of fusion. Let's see, it goes Q equals ML. So L by itself, that's Q over M. So that must be joules per kilogram. So it'll be joules per kilogram. However, I'm only allowed two significant figures because that's uh, what I'm given here. I've only got two. So I've got to write this in only two numbers. So I can say it's, uh, let's see, um, I'll make it 1.1. That'll be times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. There. If I really want to be complete, I guess that's how. There we go. So this will be my specific latent heat of fusion.